Hello students this is Dr A S Iyer I welcome you all for the course on finite element method in civil engineering In the last class we have solved one numerical example on coordinate transformation in isoparametric formulation where we had discussed if natural coordinates of any point of the quadrilateral are given how to find out its cartesian coordinates now today in this class we will solve one numerical example where we will discuss about if cartesian coordinates of any point are given how to find out its natural coordinates okay so we will see with the help of one numerical example of quadrilateral the statement of problem is for the iso isoparametric quadrilateral element shown in figure determine natural coordinates of the point q which has cartesian coordinates 7 and 4 so x is equal to 7 and y equal to 4 so if you select any point q here in quadrilateral whose cartesian coordinates are 7 4 and question is what are the natural coordinates of that point q okay this is the problem statement now given element is quadrilateral which is called as map element given element is quadrilateral which is called as map element and we know that in the solution very first step is draw parent element for the given quadrilateral isoparametric element so what is a parent element of quadrilateral parent element of quadrilateral is four noded rectangular element in natural coordinate system so this is the parent element okay now we know that in natural coordinate system origin is always assumed at the center so coordinates of origin are 0 0 which is at the center now this is first quadrant this is second quadrant this one is third quadrant and this is fourth quadrant now node numbers for the rectangular element are similar to quadrilateral this bottom left is 1 so here it is given 1 then this is 2 this is 2 like this this is 3 and 4 so 3 and 4 okay so node numbers are in anti clockwise sense as per the given quadrilateral now coordinates of node number 1 2 3 4 in natural coordinate system we know that maximum ordinate is plus 1 and minimum ordinate is minus 1 so since it is a first quadrant node number 3 is in first quadrant the coordinates will be plus 1 and plus 1 right plus plus similarly node number 1 is in third quadrant so coordinates will be minus 1 and minus 1 right node number 4 is in second quadrant so z is minus and eta is plus so it is minus 1 1 and node number 2 it is in fourth quadrant so z is plus 1 and eta is minus 1 okay these are the coordinates of four nodes of the natural rectangular element in natural coordinate system now step number 2 we have to write down the shape functions for this four node rectangular element so we know that already in the previous problem we had discuss shape functions of four nodes are n1 is equal to 1 minus z 1 minus eta upon 4 so this denominator 4 is common to all four shape functions and this numerator brackets are following the signs of these coordinates of nodes it's very simple to remember this numerator for example node number 1 the coordinates are minus 1 minus 1 it means it is 1 minus z and this is 1 minus eta this is 1 minus z 1 minus eta because of minus minus these both are minus so 1 minus z 1 minus eta upon 4 is a n1 similarly shape functions for node number 2 z is plus and eta is minus here 1 minus 1 so that's why 1 plus z 1 minus eta similarly node number 3 both coordinates are positive plus 1 plus 1 so both the brackets 1 plus z 1 plus eta positive the last node number 4 coordinates are minus 1 and plus 
so xi is minus and eta is plus so 1 minus xi 1 plus eta that is a shear function 4 so like this you can write down the shear functions of four nodes once you write down the shear functions of four nodes now step number 3 we know that what are the cartesian coordinates of any point that is x is equal to 7 x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 4 this is any point q not p this is q point so x is equal to 7 and y equal to 4 are given to you now we know that in isoparametric formulation geometry coordinates or geometry equations are x is equal to n1 x1 plus n2 x2 plus n3 x3 plus n4 x1 similarly y equal to n1 y1 plus n2 y2 plus n3 y3 plus n4 y4 so this x and y represent the geometrical coordinates or geometry of the quadrilateral element okay now here x is equal to 7 given to us y equal to 4 is also given to us now x1 to x4 and y1 to y4 are the coordinates of quadrilateral which are also given to us in the original figure if you look at the original figure this x1 to x4 and y1 to y4 here if you look at this figure this is x1 y1 this is x2 y2 x3 y3 and x4 y4 so this x1 to x4 and y1 to y4 are given to us using this x1 to x4 and y1 to y4 along with this x is equal to 7 and y equal to 4 here if you substitute if you substitute you will get the equations from first equation x is equal to 7 okay x is equal to 7 here now this is the value of n1 and this is x1 this is n2 this is x2 n3 x3 n4 x4 so if you substitute all these values of n1 to n4 and x1 to x4 here now if you simplify this since 4 is common in all four terms if you take this 4 on left hand side it will be 7 into 4 right 28 it will be 28 now if you multiply these two brackets you will get like this 1 minus eta 1 minus xi plus xi into eta similarly multiplication of these two bracket is written here multiplication of these two brackets written here and multiplication of these two brackets here then this x1 x2 x3 x4 now finally if you multiply this x1 to x4 also to the bracket and if you simplify if you cancel the similar terms and if you simplify final equation of this will be like this 9 minus 9 xi plus eta plus 3 eta 3 xi eta okay this is you will let assume this equation number 1 which is from x is equal to n1 x1 to n4 x4 equation now similarly similarly there is a second equation y equal to n1 y1 plus n2 y2 plus n3 y3 plus n4 y4 similarly if you put the values of y that is 4 here value of n1 n2 n3 and n4 then y1 y2 y3 and y4 again if you simplify this you will get the equation 3 is equal to 3 is equal to xi plus 9 eta plus xi eta okay if you simplify all these brackets and if you just uh, cancel these similar terms and if you simplify this is the final equation let us assume this equation is equation number 2 okay now using these two equations if you write down these two equations again okay it has two unknown xi and eta so two equation two unknowns if you want to solve it from equation number 1 if you calculate value of xi here if you take this plus eta term on left hand side it will be 9 minus eta then if you take xi common from this first and last term it will be 9 plus 3 eta then if you divide it here okay you will get the value of xi so xi equal to 3 minus 9 eta divided by 1 plus eta or you can use this equation also to find out the xi 
okay from any one equation you find out xi and put in the next equation okay here here this equation actually xi is determined this value of xi is determined from the second equation not first this is determined from the second equation and then this value of xi is substituted in the equation number 1 here it is equation number 1 right please make a correction this xi value is obtained from second equation so if you take xi common from first and last the remaining is 1 plus here it is 1 and plus eta okay and then if you take this 9 eta on left hand side it is 3 minus 9 eta this one and then when you take this 1 plus eta after xi common 1 plus eta if you take on left hand side it will be divided to that so xi is equal to 3 minus 9 eta upon 1 plus eta which is obtained from the second equation i repeat again this is equation number 2 xi is obtained from 2 and it is substituted in equation 1 so if you put this xi in equation number 1 here you will get complete equation in terms of eta now if you simplify this you will get the value of eta is equal to 0 0.2105 this is final value of eta and if you put this eta here in the expression of xi, you will get value of xi which is 0 0.91325. We know that sum of natural coordinate is always equal to 1. Right. So, xi equal to 0 0.91325 and eta is equal to 0 0.2105. Not sum of natural coordinates, maximum value of natural coordinate is always 1. Right. So, this value should not be greater than 1, 0 0.91325 and eta is equal to 0 0.215. So, like this, these are the natural coordinates of that any point Q whose Cartesian coordinates are 7, 4. So, like this, if natural coordinates, if Cartesian coordinates of any point are given, you can determine the natural coordinates of that point. I will just briefly show you again these steps to understand. Yes. So, problem is for the given isoparametric quadrilateral element, find out the natural coordinates of the point Q whose Cartesian coordinates are 7, 4. So, this is quadrilateral given. So, we are first drawing the parent element of this quadrilateral which is 4 noded rectangle element in natural coordinate system right first draw the parent element and in step number 2 write down the shear functions of 4 nodes ok n1, n2, n3, n4 then x is equal to 7 and y equal to 4 the coordinates Cartesian coordinates of any point q are given now using these two equations which represent the geometry of the isoparametric element if you substitute value of n1 to n4 and x1 to x4 similarly n1 to n4 and y1 to y4 from first equation you will get this 9 equal to 9 xi plus eta plus 3 xi eta which is equation number 1 and from the equation of y you will get the second equation and if you solve these two equations you will get xi is equal to eta is equal to 0 0.2105 and xi equal to 0 0.91325 okay so like this you can transfer the either natural coordinates into cartesian coordinates or cartesian coordinates into natural coordinates in isoparametric formulation okay in the next class we will see about the jacobian matrix in the isoparametric formulation okay Thank you. Thank you very much.